guys, we are in for a very interesting uh, sign just in a few seconds. I can already promise you that much. But to the top left of our Terran versus Protoss, we have our Terran player starting for TSL. It is. TSL I am rubbing that drop, so rude. <laughs> Opponent starting at the bottom right of the two player map is our Protoss player in the blue. Starting for Team MVP, we have MVP Tails. Not naming himself after one side of a coin, but rather after the Sonic the Hedgehog character. I'm still waiting for the sign. Do you see it? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> it's like, what? There oh, we go. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> we all knew that sweets were crazy, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what? <laughs> I don't know, man. This is uh, the second sign. So what? Switzerland loves StarCraft, and so does this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we talked. I talked to them a little bit earlier, and appar it's, uh, apparently it's complicated. They come from Switzerland, but they are Swedish. Or I'm uh, probably mixing things up right now. But yeah, they knew who Nani was. Okay. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> People in Korea know who Nani was, man. Who don't even follow StarCraft that close. It was actually pretty cool when we were. Um, I don't know which uh, Code S finals was that. It was actually MVP against Tails, and then uh, um, well, we, the, we hung out uh, in the, between the games downstairs. And one of the Kore one of the Koreans came with this kid, and he wanted an autograph. The kid wanted an autograph from Naniwa, and they didn't speak like any English, so it was pretty funny. It was pretty cute as well. So you are perfectly right. All the Koreans they know Naniwa. This he's definitely a figure and a name that the people recognize here. Yeah, yeah he's uh, quite the recognizable face. Uh, I searched Naniwa on Naver once. I got a lot of results. That's when I knew. Well, these two guys are also pretty well known, and we have Polt now with the one barracks into expansion at the top left. Of course, on Ohana, one of the builds that we occasionally see is just a lot of pressure on one base by the Terran player trying to build the siege tanks, going for two barracks, one factory, and the starport, pushing yeah. out, sieging up on the low ground, and uh, putting as much pressure as possible onto the expansion of the Protoss player. And uh, the Protoss player Tails here has gone for double zealot before Stalker, getting both of those out pretty quickly. Well, because Polt did go barracks before command center, you should be able to hold this pressure no problem, especially now that he's got two marines. Uh, this micro is, is not much of a challenge as long as you have, you know, some experience here. You know, just kind of dance around the zealot. When the second zealot arrives, things get harder, but yeah. he has a bunker, so... Well, the bunker's not up, and that's the one challenge that he has. If he's able to complete the bunker, then, of course, those zealots will be in, in a lot of trouble. But the SCV is dead, and therefore the zealot is able to retreat here, but in the end it will die. Not and even going to send the second zealot because he knows he can't fight against that. Yeah, there are too many marines already. He has three right now. The fourth one will pop out in just a few seconds. And Paul mixing uh, and down the two barracks into the mix right now. We have also his first gas and tails going from this into an expansion as well. Yeah. Polt having his expansion up significantly earlier than Tails, but on the other hand, he does actually uh, have it on the high ground, so he's not getting too much of an advantage. He will get the extra mules. Polt taking just one gas, which means he'll probably get a tech lab on one of these barracks very soon, start yeah. getting stem. Tails here is going straight for the robotics. He's not going for the double uh, gateway that we usually see after the expansion, so he doesn't want to be super safe here, but tries to get it earlier. Scout tries to have his tech a little bit faster. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's gone up the ramp, which is what the Zealot is partially for, to check for a command center and to punish a command center first a little bit. And he's like, oh, no command center, so now I'm a little bit in the dark. i got to find out what it is you're doing, because you could be having cloaked banshees in your main base for all I know, because I haven't been able to see with my Zealot. So he's playing this a little bit safer uh, as far as vision goes. At this point, of course, the two gateways are being added. He needs the production in order to hold off aggression of his opponent. But with what Paul did so far, it really works out. It would be a bit of a different story if Paul was actually trying to fake him out here and just build the bunker on the low ground and then uh, not the command center on the high ground, but instead two additional barracks. Exactly. Uh, that would be something he would really struggle to hold with this late extra gates. I have a choice that every pro has to make. Gates before Robo or Robo before Gates. Now, Paul is uh, setting up things just like a normal follow-up here. Like I said, getting the one tech lab with Stim coming out, and as soon as he gets his additional gases up and mining, he's going to add probably a second tech lab so he can get more Marauders out. May add a reactor as well. 
the time when we usually see the aggression on the map is when the first few medivacs are in the game. Then Paul can use those in order to elevate a couple of units into the main base. And uh, this drop play can be so dangerous. So if you are not in a good position, then you might just lose way too many units. Especially, of course, the Mineral Lines are the first target for every Terran player here. And Terrence at this point is also now going for a more of a... He's like going really forge heavy. Upgrade heavy, he wants to get the double upgrades, double forge is out, and he goes for the Twilight Council now, so he will have a little bit of a delayed Colossus tag if he doesn't go for the Storm right away anyways. And this attack by Paul, even though it's coming without Medivax, it's coming a little bit faster, and he's got a huge lead in army supply since all of the resources that Tails have been spending right now have been on all these upgrades and tech, for example, getting Blink. He's, he's not force fielding. Oh, uh, he needs to get in there right now, and Pult's actually going to get in here. Oh, oh wow. wow. This could be horrible. Stim is not done, but he's got so many units here. This could be really bad. I mean, the force fields are not too shabby, but there's just too much, and those zealots live really dangerous. Only two sentries, and Tails realized a little bit too late that Pult is attacking. Therefore, the sentry is not able to force field him out on the low ground, but this is getting really ugly. Yeah, but Polt will be pushed back here uh, with another warp in of Zealots. He's going to lose the sentries, though. No concussive shells and no stem really showing in this attack, though. Yeah, but this is huge. Killing the sentries is so important yeah. at this point because Tails is now down 200, min uh, 200 gas already, and he's faced with the decision to get additional sentries into the picture or delay his tech. So this is like really annoying for him. Exactly, and, and if, he delays, uh, if he delays the tech, then that's going to give Polt an advantage. And if he decides not to delay the tech and to get the sentries out, then he's possibly going to die to Polt's next pressure. In total, they lost exactly the same amount of resources so far, 900 for each of them. But Polt is in a really good position now. He's on two bases, he has more SCVs than Tails has probes and double mule. He killed the sentries, which is really important. And this means that in the next fight, Tails will not have any sentries, because at this point, he's going uh, straight for the Templar Archive and wants to start with his storm. Yeah, and his upgrades are going through really nicely, uh, I would say, though. He did not have to delay those. He started the upgrades before, which is why he had so few units. But that's going to be one thing he gets ahead of Polt in. It's going to be 1-1 one, one before plus 1 is even done for Polt, before it's even halfway done. And the Templar Archives is going to be something he's going to have to rely on to hold this pressure, though. Whether it's Archons or Storms, depending on when Polt decides to attack. This attack that he's going for right now, not going to have either of those for that. It's coming right now. It's coming hard and fast. He's got Combat Shields finishing up right now. Concussive Shells is going to need a little bit more time, though. He killed the Observer. Really important here. Those Observer helped tail so much earlier. And now with the Force Fields, the Stim was baited out. But still, the energy of those sentries is going to run low, and he only has two of them. Three by now. Warped in another one. Yeah. And, you know, the, you know, every sentry he has to warp in really depletes his gas. He's got less than 100 available to him right now. And here we go again. Uh, once again, the Stim and the Force Fields, they're spot on. Tails trying to save his Zealots. Doing a good job here. But Paul still has the option of just uh, elevating those units into the main base. And that's something he may do. He's going to check for the third base at this moment in time. If you notice, Tails' resources are starting to stack up here. He really wants to spend his gas on Storm specifically, it seems like. And so he's not spending his minerals because he can't spend the minerals without the gas. He's also supply blocked here, making three pounds at a time. And Polt is just hitting his depots. He's attacking. He's not losing as many units. He's starting to find himself in a huge supply lead here. Paul is currently up 20 supply, as you already said, and he is still continuing the pressure. He's getting more medivacs, more ground units, also adding the upgrades. Of course, he's a little bit behind in the upgrade count, as Tails is now getting plus 2, plus 2. But in total, a really comfortable position for Paul to be in. As long as he continues the pressure, he can safely take his third base, which we see right now. Tails spotted this with the Observer, but there's not a lot that he can do about it. Yeah. This is such an uncomfortable position, uh, and... Holt is, I mean, he's already saturated there. He's going to decide to make an orbital, of course, as he knows there's no way for Tails to really attack him, for him to worry about that. And no storm still for Tails. He has not started that research. He's got a lot of research banked up here. He's not really doing a whole lot of anything with those. He is going to start a Nexus, but this is this is not going to be easy to hold. In fact, it may be impossible with the concave at the bottom of the ramp here for Holt. Yeah, he's going to have to cancel that. That was a weird choice. Because he just can't hold it, there are too many units, and as long as the Terran player controls the choke point, the Protoss cannot move down. Not without Storm, and he doesn't research Storm. He doesn't have any area of effect damage, he doesn't even go for any kind of Colossal play. It's almost as if he wants to wait until charge, I mean rather 1-1 uh, one, one, and then attack with his charged Zealots, but he's going to go in right here, and Paul again getting the better positioning. And this is impossible for Tails to attack into, not with that much healing, no AoE damage, and the 2-2 two, two upgrades are not done. On the... well... 
on the low ground, maybe he can take him. But right now, with this position and Paul just playing this so smart, it's really hard for Tails to do anything. And Paul has his third base up. He has a much higher SCV count. He has a great economy. And he's getting every single tech that is needed. And Tails, he cannot do anything. He needs to either go for Storm or at least get the robotic space for Colossi. One of the two. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's doing neither. I mean, he's starting 3-3. But Polt's army size entirely is going to be so big that the upgrades may not be enough to, to turn the tide of battle. Especially with all the medevacs he's got out. The problem will be much bigger as soon as the Ghost Academy is done and he has the first few ghosts. Yes, of course these gateway units are going to be really strong. Drop in the main base, but oh, the core is killing the core and then he can just take down those pylons of the gateways as well. And now he completely makes sure that Tails is out of position. He can move in with the rest of the army. Even denies the upgrades here. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's waiting a long time trying to keep the army out of position as long as possible. Suddenly Tails realizes, wait a minute, maybe I should not have actually sent everything into the main. Pult does not get to the third base in time though, and he's going to be able to protect it. But as I was just about to say, the, of course the upgrades for those gateway units will be really strong, but as soon as the MPs hit, that yep. won't matter that much They don't anymore. care about upgrades, exactly. And he is just going for the probe line again. Tails going for a big attack, not even defending at all, pulling his probes away. That's desperation right there. He's really, really desperate to make something happen. But there are way too many units. Look at this DPS for Paul. Guardian Shield is nice. It's a pretty cool ability, but only if the units are really covered by it. And the Zealots were not all of them die. The rest of the army bites the dust and Tails types GG.